defeated. They had been beaten by this. They were not in a fit state to have visions. They were or to have grief illus illusions. As they were so disappointed, so lost, so shattered, they were in no mental state to be to induce any such phenomenon. Then the other option is Jesus could rise from the dead. It fits all the historical facts. It makes perfectly clear why Peter was a coward one minute and bold the next. It makes sense to put Mary as the first witness because she just was. It happened. It makes perfect sense the disciples Jesus rose from the dead as they were crushed by Jesus' death and were not expecting anything. And then the next minute they could be bold. It makes perfect sense and that's why Mark told it. You might say miracles do not happen, but that is just a philosophical argument. And if you were honest, you would say the only way to know if a miracle happened is to check the historical data. You might say there are minor contradictions within the Gospels on the historical resurrection. Those historical contradictions are only a way of looking at the Gospels. What about where all the Gospels agree on various historical facts? What about the fact that these so-called contradictions are really just a mistake that one gospel says one angel, another gospel says two angels, another gospel says a man. It's obviously looking at things from a different perspective. If I say there was one angel at the tomb and my friend says there were two angels, if, they, if I say there was only one, and my friend said there was only two, that would be a contradiction. But if I say there was one angel, and my friend says there were two angels, I'm not being dogmatic, I'm just giving you a general statement. So when you say there are contradictions in the Gospels, you're putting words in the mouth of the Gospels. You may say that... Christianity came from Greek and Egyptian gods. Plutarch in Greek and e Egyptian uh, gods shows there is no there was no belief in a dying and rising God that was central that could have influenced Christianity. Mary Joe Sharp, a good scholar, has done a number of lectures on this showing that um, these ideas are not palatable, have no real historical basis whatsoever. In conclusion, I believe that there is a strong case here for the resurrection of Christ. I believe it's important to consider it. Anthony Flew said, the evidence for the resurrection is better for claimed miracles in any other religion, it is astoundingly different in quality and quantity. Gary Habermas, my pilgrimage from atheism to theism, an exclusive interview with former British atheist Professor Anthony Flew, available from the website Biola University, www.biola.edu.edu. So we've, we've come to the end. Um, I've done this lecture before and I said at the end of it, it doesn't prove the resurrection but it gives you good evidence for it. I would reconsider my statement. I would say um, that that is in one uh, lecture or other lectures I've given more detail so uh, I've said that there is solid proof for the resurrection um, but what I would say here is if you take the presuppositions the package of the worldview and the data itself 
you have solid grounds to believe that Christ rose from the dead. Those are my conclusions. I just want to finish with some reflections on this. In the minimal fact approach, you normally go to the minutiae detail of the resurrection uh, of the cross and give evidence for that, and then the empty. In this argument, it was a very simple three pronged argument show that the Gospels are early source material, that is to say, first century, show that the Gospels are historically reliable and then generally trustworthy, and then three, show that the Gospels are based in eyewitness material. Show that this information has been consistent in the historical document from the first and second century, and therefore you have a strong case that Christ rose from the dead based on those facts. It's a broader approach than the minimal fact approach. All the other views that would come against my view such as um, Richard Carrier, Dr. Price, Bart Ehrman, none of these competing views would cover all the facts like, like um, the resurrection. So the Christian faith is in a very strong position in its proof that Christ rose from the dead. Um, again, I think that the debate has to be on the grounds of data and presuppositions. And I take a more nuanced position. I, I, I take presuppositions and facts go together. They can't be separated. So that's my um, talk today. Um, you can go and read Jesus and the Eyewitnesses by uh, Richard Balcom and um, basically the heart of the evidence is, is from that book really. Uh, the Minimal of Fact Approach, you can look at The Resurrection of Jesus mm -hmm. by Dr. Lycona, IVP. Uh, Presuppositions and worldview, you can look at Cornelius Van Til if you go on Presuppositional 101. Go on the website, you'll be able to download Presuppositions uh, um, books on Presuppositional Apologetics. Um, so these are my thoughts and uh, I hope they've been a stimulant to you and I've kind of just gone over some of my ideas. I know that maybe it's over your head because we're talking about a lot of things in the academic world and a lot of philosophical and theological and historical ideas. But I did spend a lot of time on some of these issues because I wanted to get it off my chest. I thought there were issues that needed to be stated that are not being stated online, that are not being stated by websites that are not even being stated by professional academics. So I, I spent some time uh, on some issues because I felt that it's important. I haven't given a lot of time on data, but I think that I paint a broad brush that would should encourage you to believe in Christ and to not be intimidated by other people's beliefs who would criticize yours. you to go and study the scholars that are mentioned and um, you know learn about the subject 
and engage in the subject if you can. So I'm going to invite you to come to know the Lord. If you want to know Jesus today, you want to believe in him, trust in him, follow him, then I'm asking you to believe in him today. I'm asking you to come to know him as your Lord and Savior. I'm asking you to trust in him, to believe in him. That's what I'm asking. So let's come before the Lord. Father, we thank you for this day. We thank you for your love and your grace. We thank you for your blessings. We give you the praise. We give you the glory today. And so, Father, we pray that you be with us now. Bless this lecture. And may people come to know you as Lord and Savior. So, Lord, I pray that you are blessed in the name of you, Lord Jesus Christ. Bless us all. Bless every individual that watched this video. And may we all come to know you as our Lord and Savior. We praise you, Lord, in your name. Amen. Okay, I think that's it now. I think I'm going to make a cup of tea now, folks. And uh, so I'll leave, I'll leave the uh, comment section open. Please feel free to make comments. If the comments are stupid, if they're abusive, then you will be banned from the channel. So it's up to you. If you want to engage in debate and discuss, then write your arguments down. In a week's time, I'll come back and I'll, I'll give you my thoughts. If you just put abuse, uh, you'll be banned straight away. So uh, this is an opportunity for me to drop out or uh, if they want to debate and discuss. Put your comments there and your arguments and I'll come back to you in a week's time. Uh, I'll make another video rebutting any arguments that me drop out or any atheist out there might want to put on. I'll make a video uh, rebutting what anybody said. All right. So it's an opportunity for atheists to come back and skeptics to come back and uh, say what they have to say uh, on the issue. All right. Thank you for listening and God bless you. Feel free to mirror this video if it promotes debate and discussion. And uh, God bless you all today.